Welcome to the Mr. Skin Podcast, your weekly dose of what's new and what's nude in movies, TV, and Hollywood's sexiest stars. Now get ready for your host, the world's foremost authority on celebrity nudity, Mr. Skin. Legendary Mr. Skin. Mr. Skin. Dude, Mr. Skin. Skin. Skin.com. Skin, everybody. Coast to coast from Los Angeles, Chicago, and New York, it's the Mr. Skin Podcast with your hosts, Mr. Skin and Andrea Lowell. We want to hear from you. Call the show and leave us a voicemail at 484-SKIN-POD. Find all things Mr. Skin Podcast online at MrSkinPodcast.com. Hey everyone, welcome to the Mr. Skin Podcast, sponsored by Streamate.com, the global leader in live streaming. Like, you don't even know. With the hottest porn stars and amateurs broadcasting live directly from their bedroom to yours, Streamate creates a totally unique and intimate experience where you get to direct the show however you want. With an endless variety of performers, you're sure to find your perfect match on Streamate.com. The question is, are you ready? <laughs> Let's get into it. We are it. ready, Andrea. We are ready. Well, we're always ready. I'm just let, trying to let these listeners know they need to get up on this if they if they don't know about it. <laughs> yeah, well, when I when I last talked to you, I said I'm I'm really excited about Sunday night, November fifth because we have sh- uh, Shameless yes. first episode of their eighth season. Yes. We had Smilf, the new show. By the way, I heard um, Rosie O'Donnell and Howard Stern today talking about Smilf because she plays Frankie Shaw's mom in that. Oh, so that debuted. Cool. I know. It's really cool. And then uh, The Girlfriend Experience season two, episode one. So uh, we knew I was kind of excited about today's show because not only would I have the nudity from that, mm. but also uh, tons of stuff that we didn't get to talk about oh <laughs> tons of stuff that we didn't get to talk about um last week because we in honor of our 69th episode we're doing my greatest uh, 69 scenes and and going down scenes oh so, yeah <laughs> yeah so a lot of good stuff to talk about today andrea okay. so um i guess let's just get started let's do it um let me first say, before we get into all the TV nudity, I wanted to catch up. There is uh, a movie nude note that I do want to share, and that's that uh, we didn't talk about this yet, but uh, uh, Atomic Blonde is out. I believe it's out on Blu-ray um, next Tuesday, but it's out on VOD now. And remember Atomic Blonde, it was out this summer, mm-hmm. where Charlize Theron was an undercover, uh, undercover M16 agent. And she's on a mission in Berlin during the Cold War. And uh, forgetting all that, it's like, think of like James Bond, but with a hot chick as as the James Bond. And we, you and I, we've talked about Charlize Theron many times through oh, yeah. the years. Oh, yeah. Uh, great actress. <laughs> Here it is. Great actress, super hot, and most important, not afraid to do nudity. Uh, she's done some great stuff in her career. But um, not only was she nude in this, but when this movie came out, I get a lot of emails from you know, guys that (laughs) just can't figure it out themselves where (laughs) um, she, where they'll say like, who was the girl in the movie? Like if they knew who Charlize Theron was, but there was a, a French babe that she hooked up with and the actress's name is Sophia Boutella. And uh, yeah. And there's some really hot uh, girl, girl action in this uh, movie. I'm looking yeah. at it now. This is yeah. hot, hot, hot. Yeah, it's um, Woo. it's gonna go. It, it's gonna, Andrea. It's gonna go down uh, <laughs> as some of the uh, hottest uh, girl, girl. Um, action of the uh, of the year, so we'll keep you posted on that as far as the Anatomy Awards. But um, yeah, so uh, this Atomic Blonde is out. Uh, great nudity from Theron and the Sophia Batella, including more importantly, a really hot. Uh, a real hot girl girl scene as you could see by some of the pics that's out on vod it'll be out on uh blu-ray next week so um it's cool and the other thing too andrea yeah this is sort of kind of a blockbuster summer movie Mm -hmm. and i just love when summer movies uh that they spend good budget on and big stars has nudity it's you know how there's a lot of pg-13 stuff in the summer but um atomic blonde was not that but yeah this uh this girl's name sophia butella and and oh you might know her 
Uh, she was the girl in the mummy from uh, earlier this year. Yes! So she was the hot chick okay. in the mummy. Okay. Totally. Yeah. I was yeah. like, yeah. you know what though? This scene is really, really sexy. The angles that the camera guy got. I mean, the lighting, it, the, mm-hmm. the fishnets Charlize has on. It's just really, really sexy. This is going to be a, fun to try to find something that yeah, beats it, this. It, right. I don't think Tom Cruise was as interested <laughs> in The Mummy as you were <laughs> for some <laughs> reason. I don't know. But you know? yeah, she was the girl with uh, Tom Cruise and The Mummy. So uh, uh, yeah, so she's become, uh, she's starting to become a big name. You know, it's funny. Um, there's guys that have no clue who she is and they hit me up. But then I remember um, in it was like in the fall, I was checking the most searched actresses at our website and Sophia Batella was in the top 25 wow. and it's kind of cool because she's not an American actress. So see, she's obviously she was in the mummy and atomic blonde, but I, I mean, is it because of her acting Andrew? Or was it because she's a hot chick who got naked? that guys mm. were uh, uh, super interested in her. So you know, that is the question. I think yeah. uh, it's just, she has an extremely exotic, different look and she has a real badass energy. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like she was creepy yeah. in the mummy, but you still want to fuck yeah. her. Uh, oh, yeah. And I think that, <laughs> That's alluring. It's like, oh my gosh, like this chick's trying to kill people, but like, I kind of want her to kill people just so she can have sex with them. Uh, And the same thing going on here. It's like, she's just kind of naughty looking, uh, but beautiful. So I see the allure for sure. Yeah, and it'll definitely, uh, when we do our best lesbian scenes of the year, it's going to be in in the running. It's in the top five, and then we'll vote and figure that all out for the Anatomy Awards. But yeah, so it's called Atomic Blonde. It'll be out uh, next week on Blu-ray. You could check them, which, by the way, it's a really good movie, too. So uh, you'll like that. And um, we will uh, uh, keep you posted on where it lands as far as the um, Anatomy Awards go. But uh, TV, yes. I have tons of TV stuff uh, to talk about. And I got to say that, you know, as far as business goes, one of the the best TV series for, for my website <laughs> has been Shameless, which is in its uh, eighth season. They just debuted last night, the uh, season eight, episode one. And Andrew, if you don't mind occasionally seeing William H. Macy's white ass uh, in, in certain scenes, this is a fantastic <laughs> uh, show for nudity. And, and the primary reason, in my opinion, is the gorgeous star of the show emmy rossum who absolutely um, absolutely and and i've said this through the years is because we even talked about her in my 69 scenes last week is um not only is she the star of a you know popular show eight seasons on showtime um she's the star of the show but and not only is she beautiful and sexy but she does the nudity just as much as any uh, girl on the series, any if extra not that shows more, up. <laughs> right? If not more, if right? If not yeah. more, and yeah, I mean, we even had the lip slip of uh, eternity from her. Oh yeah, she had like, their double lip slip last year. Double, yes. double. I was just yeah. like, what? Emmy Ross is I do like have to say an that, acclaimed uh, actor. I, 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 yeah, I, I have to say <laughs> that I don't think she intended to do the double lip slip, but my uh, crack staff, no pun intended, in the <laughs> Mister Skin Labs, uh, was able to find that. So. Uh, yeah, so so I was really excited, season eight, episode one. That being said, yes. um, of course, uh, last night has no nudity, but um, uh, there was a scene right at the beginning where, or there was a scene in there where Emmy Rossum is in her bra and panties debating whether she should jump in bed with this uh, uh, guy, she, uh, some random hookup guy, and she she's staring at a large blue dildo uh, there in her underwear while the guy waits in bed for her, and ultimately she decides that she doesn't ho- want to hook up with the guy. Guy, but let me just say that Emmy Rossum <laughs> in her brawn panties is better than most actresses naked. So I, it, it, I don't give best underwear scenes away too much anymore. But if this was, this was definitely be one of the hottest of the year, no question about it. I love it. I, I yeah. love it, and I just can't wait to see what this season of Shameless reveals oh, be for so us. So much, yeah. Will, will, will we see William H. Pasty's ass? Probably, but we'll oh, yeah. also see tons of great. Um, nudity from all the girls on the show, Shanola Hampton, oh, etc. Yeah, Shanola yeah, Hampton. Ruby, Mo- oh Ruby Modine's on this season. That's uh, Matthew Modine's yes. daughter. She did some uh, crazy nudity uh, last season. So, and I know you're a fan of the show. And by the way, this is filmed in my hometown of Chicago, so I have extra love for Shameless. So now, do you ever see them um, filming? Yeah, every once in a while. I know, oh, like, so um, rad. the dude that plays Lip was um, my friends. You know, I obviously 
because I go on the radio so much. I have friends that do shows, and he Lip went on um, Pete McMurray's radio show here in Chicago, and um, you know you you see him about town, but they're they're accessible when they're filming here, and they're pre- you know all, all pretty nice you know nice people so that's and, so and they awesome. do a lot of shooting in even our neighborhood uh here where the skin offices are not just in the city at large but like literally in our neighborhood so that's pretty cool that's i so never get, uh, i've never accidentally seen an emmy ross some nude scene while they were filming here but i'm sure well, that's filmed back at the studios in la but what are you gonna do that would be amazing <laughs> if you did you imagine? Though. oh my god yeah, as, as the police are escorting me out in handcuffs <laughs> 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 like this yeah. is a closed set, Mr. Skin. <laughs> hey, whoa, what do you mean? Um, anyway, so Shameless season eight debuted last night. Then I was also really excited about Smilf. Now we had talked to you about it a couple mm. weeks ago because um uh because we were able to get the first episode two weeks before it aired, but it finally aired to the general public last time or last night on Showtime. And this is the show with um Frankie uh shaw who is uh um she was like um i want to say at the 2015 sundance film festival she did a um short movie called smilf Mm. and it 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 did so well that it ended up uh, a couple years later now it's a show on showtime and like i said i heard rosie o'donnell on the howard stern show today she's going to play uh frankie shaw's uh, depressed uh, uh, psycho mom on it and it's based in Boston and it's going to be great not only because uh, Frankie Shaw's gorgeous by the way she was uh, uh, what's that guy from uh, Mr. Robot Remy Malik's uh, girlfriend in the first season so she's gorgeous you know that um, she's going to get very naked a lot and um, hopefully it'll be a, a show that you know is around for quite some time but uh, yeah we're excited about that and um uh, what we saw last night in the top, she was messing around with her stomach, showing her incredible boobs. Incredible uh, boobs. Yeah, yeah. And we've seen a couple other snippets of things coming up, and uh, you're going to be in for a good year of Smilf nudity from Frankie Shaw. We're excited about it. Yeah, even the little bits of that show that I've seen from talking to you, I was just like, whoa, there, she's she goes deep. Uh, yeah. She's fearless, and I'm I'm really excited about this show. So Yeah, I got, uh, I, I got my, you know how like, uh, and you know how this is there's so many tv shows you kind of kind of pick and choose well this is one i uh got my wife we're gonna (laughs) definitely watch you know we're taping it so we'll i'll be on this show um you know i got my handful of shows that you could actually where i could actually watch all the episodes versus just the nude scenes yeah this will be one of them yeah so i'm excited awesome so anyway be ready for some a lot of good frankie shaw nudity the show's called smilf season one episode one debuted last night on showtime now Another show that debuted last night that I'm really excited about is the uh, second season of The Girlfriend Experience. And this is on the Stars Network. And last season, Riley Keough was the star. You know, it's about a Manhattan call girl based on the movie mm-hmm. uh, of the same name. And this season, they're doing a, you know kind of an anthology thing where uh, it's a new cast uh, for the season. And um, what I'm hearing is from my... Uh, guys in the content department that the uh so they aired the first two episodes last night and the season is going to feature two separate storylines uh each with their own episodes which is interesting so uh they're going to I guess Stars is going to air two episodes um, one for each storyline back to back for the next seven weeks. So that's pretty interesting what they're doing. Yeah. And, and the first episode in season two follows uh, this Anna played by Louisa Krause, who's an escort that caters to politicians in D.C. Oh, geez. And uh, yeah, we see her wearing a three uh, see through top as she meets a client. Um, and then uh, there was some interesting scene here, Andrea. So they have this this kind of now keep in mind girlfriend experience like with riley kehoe who by the way is elvis's granddaughter Mm -hmm. uh last year they would show like jizz and stuff on on it's pretty advanced like it's it's, yes it's it's girlfriend experience pushes the envelope as far as cable nudity goes so last night just to get you ready for the season so this um so louisa krauss is with this michael cram um in dc and they have this really rough doggy style sex in the bathroom. And then he commands Louisa to not only blow him, but to swallow him, swallow his jizz. Mm-hmm. And then and then tells her to bring a friend next time because he's getting bored. And at the end of the episode, he returns 
uh, she returns with a friend played by Jillian Williams and she shows butt and side boob. Mm. And, uh, so like I said, be ready. Uh, some really good nudity. The second episode stars, uh, this Cameron, uh, Ijogo who's living in New Mexico under wit- witness protection. So that's a whole other thing. But as you could tell by the pics and the uh, blowjobs and the classiness yeah. of it, yeah, it's going to be a good, we're going to get a lot of good nudity from the girlfriend experience. Yeah, and so. whoever this um, actress is that's just like kneeling on the chair, um, yeah. bottomless, I can't get over how wonderful her ass is. It's like oh, there's a BJ yeah. going on on the floor and on the bed, <laughs> yep. and I'm not even looking at that. I'm like, yeah. fuck, that ass is nice. Yeah, that's <laughs> Julian Williams. Yeah, and Louisa Krause is nice too. They're giving heads. So yeah, it's a it's a good show. And it's only the first week, so we're gonna get a lot more uh, uh, a lot more nudity from the girlfriend experience. Great stuff. Uh, every yeah. Sunday night, and yeah, like you said, good over. lighting. <laughs> yeah, I love lighting. Lighting's important. It's so important. Yeah. It sets the tone, yeah. man, and yeah, it makes it look classy here oh yeah no question about it but uh anyway so and then oh and the other thing uh that i didn't get to um talk about last week um when we did the 69th episode because we went we did all those 69 scenes was that the deuce uh season one is over they only did eight episodes but they over. Were eight fan- yeah they did eight fantastic episodes and you know it's funny um this was the first of the eight episodes where maggie gyllenhaal wasn't naked but uh you had kim wong natalie paul dominique fishback and and larissa polinski all naked mm. and, and this was the uh, final episode of the first season of the deuce and um yeah it was just great stuff there was um uh, I'm trying to think, thinking back, it was two weeks ago now, but, um, Dominique Fishback was in bed with a guy, um, really hot black actress and, uh, Larissa Polensky, also black actress, super hot, showed breasts and butt. And then during a, a funny scene, um, oh no, I'm sorry. Larissa Polinsky was the girl in the scene where, uh, she's bent over the table on the, uh, oh yeah, like she's not a black actress. She is a fair, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm white, sorry. creamy yeah. princess. <laughs> no, Natalie Paul and, uh, Dominic Fishback are the black actresses, but this Larissa Polinsky, oh, um, look gets, at those bobs. uh, yeah, they're filming a porno. Maggie Gyllenhaal is like a producer in the last episode or a, uh, director, sort of, kind of. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's good. And, uh, yeah, a little of everything. Uh, Kim Wong and Asian actress, uh, uh, she's playing a prostitute with a guy. So, um, yeah, it's great stuff. And, uh, yeah, you, is, is that a milkman down there? That's a milkman, <laughs> right? In that scene, he looks like, it, he's dressed like a milkman. That looks like a milk delivery guy. Well, he's he's definitely delivering the cream oh, in that scene. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, so, uh, again, I've said this a few times, but the best show for nudity right now on television, The Deuce, uh, 2017. I can't see a show um, beating it out for nudity, but, you know, Shameless has a lot to go, and we'll see what happens. But uh, right. Uh, right now, if I had to choose for 2017, with Westworld being off the air this season, uh, The Deuce is the best uh, show for nudity of any television show. Uh, I, I'm with you, man. I mean, I don't see how anything could really beat, less, beat this. Shameless, of course, <laughs> there's always hope. You know, know. that they can, but this is like incredible nudity, so much nudity, so much variety of nudity. Like you said, we got this Kim Wong, who's like this gorgeous Asian chick, like two Mm -hmm. beautiful black actresses and like white. It's like choose your flavor. And And then every week. Yeah. And I became a big uh, Emily Mead and Margarita Laviva fan Mm -hmm. from other episodes. So just so many hot girls, so much nudity. It's all about sex. Uh, Yeah. Best show for nudity on television right now. The Deuce. uh, Great first season. Um, It'll be back for season two and uh, looking forward to it. Now it's time for our Cam Star Spotlight of the Week, sponsored by Streamate, the largest live cam platform online. Today we're joined by Anna Cherry. What's up, girl? Woo-hoo. Hi, guys. Uh, Thanks for having me. It is such cool, an honor Anna. to talk to you. Anna is one of the biggest players in the game. You've been around for quite some time, and you're so, like, like famous. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were, uh, yeah. you know, Anna... Andrea and I last year were at ABN, and what blew, what blew my mind, we were doing a lot of interviews at the ABN show for our podcast, and how how big uh, streaming has become. I to me, the the girls that were um, the cam girls were 
more popular than the adult stars as far as I was concerned as far as the audience and and the the lines and the interest at AVN last year it was really cool to see Oh, absolutely. And on top of that, I'm seeing a lot more mainstream porn stars going into camming. So I feel like we're taking over for sure. No, that's great. So what makes you decide to kind of make that transition? Is it just because it's more fun or what, what is it? Well, I started camming first and then went into producing our own videos and stuff oh, like that. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, but uh, I feel like a lot of it has to do with, uh, first of all, you work from home. Uh, you don't have to go anywhere. You set your own hours. It's extremely independent, even more so than, uh, you know, empowering porn. You still have directors and producers and all that. But at home, mm-hmm. you're your own director and producer and you don't have to leave your bedroom if you don't want to and on top of that uh, for me personally it's the interaction with the fans and the sort of getting to experience firsthand immediate instant gratification of knowing that someone is there jerking off to you and that's super (laughs) that is super hot so what is like the largest tip or the craziest gift uh, you've ever received from one of your streammate fans well, um, the, the tip thing, there's there's a bit of a dynamic of like sort of the girlfriend experiences and like the friends versus like, you know, a mm. hot live porn show mm-hmm. gang bang in and out sort of thing. So sometimes more the girlfriend experience will get the larger tips. So my sort of specialty has been in gifts. Uh, and in fact, the whole pretty much the whole of the new apartment that we moved to in the West Coast has been furnished by mm. my overseas gifts. Okay, I'm like, wow. skin, you and me need to start Wait camming. Wait a second, yeah, because, what are we doing? Right, like, right. I need some, yeah. I need some new stuff well, for I my place. I think you'd do better camming than I would. But I have a, I have a, yeah, I, I have a question know. for, yeah, I have a question for Anna. So for um, our audience that um, is fantasizing right now about Anna Cherry, give me an mm-hmm. idea, like what, what kind of Hollywood, give me a Hollywood celeb that you might, you know, people say you most look like or you sometimes you hear from people. Give, give us an idea of who, who you look like. Well, when I was much younger, I used to get Sandra Bullock a lot, but nowadays oh, it's good. Jennifer Love Hewitt. That's like the one. Oh, <laughs> dude. All right. Okay, done one and done. One of the most popular girls at our website, so that that's very good. Yeah. So <laughs> anyone listening, Anna Cherry looks like uh, Jennifer, Jennifer Love, Love Hewitt. Hewitt. That's all you need to know. That's yeah. all you need to know. That's so crazy. That's so wonderful. So, what is your favorite thing to do when you're camming? Is it is it have that kind of that intimate experience where you kind of do give the guys the girlfriend experience or do you like doing the the wild shows or is it different every day well uh mostly my specialty has been definitely in the uh the sort of live porn show and i do uh boy girl shows with my partner and those are cool. extremely popular lots of cream pie facials you know all that good stuff uh, so i mean props to him because he directs sort of the action holds the camera and comes on cue so <laughs> i just have to say props wow. to that well, but, you definitely picked a winner. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, personally, we, we do this uh, sort of a succubus role play where, you know, I, yes. I meet and crave the, the life force of, of yes, the girl. Bitches. They're coming, they're gold, you know, give me all of it. And we do gangbang role play fantasies in our gold shows, the boy girl shows ones. And uh, my niche has always been genuine orgasms. So I think uh, after a certain point with porn being so prolific out there, People kind of get a sense for what is real and what is more of a put on show and totally to gravitate towards the real uh, expression. And uh, that's been really fulfilling for me to just be able to masturbate however it feels good and people love it. And it makes me feel just awesome. Hell yeah. Now, so how can people find you on streaming? Do they just go in and type in your name? Because I already want to go on and find you. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, you can just go to Anna Cherry live.com. It's the same. Uh, link, oh, cool. But- it's Anna underscore Cherry, and there may be a second account coming soon, which will be Anna Cherry on top. But for the most part, it's just Anna underscore Cherry, and there I am on Streammate. And I mean, Red that's Street's awesome. Live and all of that. <laughs> well, thanks, Anna, and thanks again to our sponsor, Streammate, where you can interact with Anna and thousands of other sexy cam stars. And I just got to say, man, Streammate, serious fucking business i love that tagline that is the best adult tagline ever, ever. streammate serious fucking business that's great but uh yeah thanks so much Anne. that was really fun and i'm, I'm psyched I'm, I'm glad uh our audience is getting to know you yeah you're you're a delight and i can't wait to see one of your shows Woo! <laughs> <laughs> all right have a good one love you too guys thanks 
Another thing on HBO I didn't talk about last week, that Vice Principals. I, um, it's funny, I, I talked about it in season one. I hadn't had any chance yet. Um, there's seven episodes, or no, now there are eight episodes in. But um, Danny McBride plays Neil, and um, uh, it, it's it's very similar to his Eastbound and Down character, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> okay. But um, last week they celebrated spring break at a strip club, and there were a bunch of strippers, and um, nobody famous or anything, but some good nudity. And I, I did want to bring it up because um, I hadn't talked yet um, about... Uh, about the show, the season, but they'll throw nudity in um, every once in a while. But I could definitely tell you this show is a little darker than Eastbound, but I still get the same. He's the same type of character, but definitely a little darker <laughs> in uh, Vice Principals, and it airs Sunday nights on HBO. And uh, they, not a ton of nudity, but when they do, it's usually good, pretty good stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that's uh, Sunday night. Also, I wanted to talk to you about a show called um good behavior on tnt okay. it's a show um that uh oh, what nights does it air i'm this one i'm not 100 percent positive what night it airs but uh michelle dockery is um uh on the show and uh we are um big well first of all remember when i showed you um it was the last episode of good behavior um from the first season oh yeah that's, that yes. sex scene that how it was, could i forget it was, yeah it was text yeah i guess it airs sunday nights on tnt it was so um, hot yeah so yeah. sexy it was like out of control yeah no question well she played uh, uh lady mary crawley on downtown downton abbey mm -hmm. and now she's on this show uh good behavior on tnt and their very last episode of the first season uh, michelle dockery and this juan diego Bado had this crazy great sex scene that technically was non-nude because they never officially got naked but it was it was so hot that you know whatever it might as well so have been yeah we still have her down as non-nude but um um she had a really um sexy moment last sunday um which we have some pictures with of her and him you know in bed and it's like as close as you could come to showing boob without bo doing it but the good news the reason i bring it up is um for fans of michelle dockery that want to see her naked um there is a movie um coming up um called godless oh and uh we have confirmation <gasps> That she will be naked. What? Um, yes, the movie will be in theaters November 22nd. My Skin Scouts have seen it. Um, we'll share more details when it comes out, but this is breaking news. Michelle Dockery from the show uh, Good Behavior on TNT and Lady Mary Crowley from Downton Abbey will be making her uh, nude uh, debut, and we're uh, uh, very excited about it here at MrSkin.com. So, yeah, that's uh, a big yeah. deal. Big, big deal, because I feel yeah. like she's been so resistant to it, so now that she's finally broken free, can't wait to see the scene uh, of well, her yeah, nude and after debut. That, after that season one sex scene at the end, last episode, after doing that, you're pretty much... Um, uh, you're pretty much, um, uh, <laughs> you know, ready, <laughs> ready for, for nudity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and there's been other, uh, down, are you, did you ever watch da Downton Abbey? Are you okay. a Downton so Abbey Okay. So let me tell you about Downton Abbey. The, I formerly suffered from insomnia. And so the only ah. thing that would put me to sleep would be to watch <laughs> oh that's so funny down to abby and just so i could fall asleep to it because it was so kind of boring and drawn out and there wasn't much action it was just kind mm -hmm. of like a, a soap opera you know and so yeah. i would use it as like a sleeping drug <laughs> oh that's so funny so well, i've seen it all <laughs> yeah like a lot of the girls like uh the girl that plays lady rose lily oh, james beautiful we, yeah, she, yeah yeah we're gonna that's a big nude scene um that's a big nude scene uh from the exception uh from last year that we're all over and uh you know she's done good nude scenes uh, i'm just thinking even like um elizabeth mcgovern's on the show she's done amazing nudity in her career she's beautiful um, too yeah i um yeah so tons of girls i should do it the girls going down going down on downtown abbey going downtown um, on with downtown yeah, abbey yeah yeah <laughs> a lot of uh um a lot of uh the girls from that show have done some really good nudes i feel so. like even the woman i have no idea what her name is but the, there's a woman who plays like the older grandma um i feel like even oh, she's done nudity is that maggie smith yes 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, we actually have, believe it or not, it's so funny. Maggie Smith has, it, it's like the most, um, <laughs> what do you call it? Like, Random. She, she. I, I want to say she. I want to say she won an Academy Award. I'm pretty sure she did. But she did a. It's the briefest thing, but it's kind of one of those cool. Uh, um, it's one of those cool nude scenes where it's brief, but it's it's you know one of the only times you're going to see her naked. So Maggie Smith was in a movie called California Suite in 1978, and she was um, taking her robe off, and you get a little really quick shot of her left breast but you could see the whole breast so that was it and then she did a movie in 2003 where it's funny because in 1978 she had these really little boobs and then she did this movie called my house in umbria in 2003 so what are we talking like 25 years later yeah and you wouldn't believe how big, big her boob is it's like ridiculous oh, yeah it's, yeah, okay. yeah yeah I, and that should be maybe something i consider uh uh doing because in both instances she was wearing a robe and in both <laughs> in, interest in both instances it's a real breast but um in one in 1978 it's like less than an a cup and in 2003 it's like a d cup it's pretty Whoa, amazing oh i i gotta see that yeah. just the side yeah. by side yeah, so Maggie, if that if that's the one you're talking about, so, yeah, it is. Uh, but yeah, a lot of the girls from uh, Downton Abbey have been a- uh, naked, but we'll be able to add Michelle Dockery to the list on no- November 22nd, um, and uh, it's uh, the movie's called Godless, and my skin scouts have con- confirmed. So, uh, um, will will Lady Mary show Harry? Is oh, what uh, we will. God, yeah, yes. I, I will share that with you on November 22nd. Awesome. So, yeah, it's very exciting. Yes, very exciting news. So, um, anyway, where was I? I got um, sidetracked on my. Um, we were talking about uh, good behavior. Oh yeah. Oh well. Um, look at this. Uh, is this uh, did. Um, Oh, good work. Uh, CP. Oh, I'm seeing the, uh, the Maggie EP. Smith Look at titties. This. Yes. Yeah, he, uh, as I was talking about it, he went and pulled up pics for you to look at to see what her boobs look like um, uh, before and after 78 and 03. So anyway. Wow. Uh, yeah, good work by CP, the EP. Bravo. So, Bravo. Yeah. Um, also, I wanted to talk about a show, one other, a uh, couple other TV. Oh. Andrea. Yes. This is time again for our wheel of skin where uh, CP the EP spins uh, spins a wheel. And uh, I, of course, am uh, Pat Say Jackoff. You are? <laughs> Vagil White. Yes, and this is a Merkin Griffin production. <laughs> and uh, this has become a fun part of the show where uh, CP just spins a wheel, randomly pulls up an actress and uh, asks me about her. And I kind of give you the skin foe on her career. And uh, why don't you go ahead, CP? Right. I can't wait. And we have Patricia Arquette. Oh, Ooh, you, you know, you are obviously a Patricia Arquette fan. You know her well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, she... Okay, so if I had to talking about her, my first time I thought, man, is this babe, who's this hot babe, was in True Romance back in like mm. 93, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, she was the girl with Christian Slater, and it was an awesome movie, and she had those big boobs and looked so hot. And then later on, obviously, she was on that show Media for a bunch of years, probably oh, yeah. six or seven years in the mid 2000s. Uh, she even showed up on Boardwalk Empire uh, towards the end of that show. And um, I think she's doing a CSI show now. But um, yeah, so I would say she's like 48, 49 years old, if I had to guess. Um, I know she was married to Nicolas Cage uh, for a while. Also, I remember that TV series hung on HBO, yep. the guy with the big big package she was married to that dude um no confirmation as to whether he really has a big package he just played a guy on tv you can't be as big as they were making it seem right no they never showed it by the way they never showed it are you sure i don't did they ever show does anyone know cp that i don't think they ever feel like they had to have no, I I want to say they never did. I don't think they did, but we oh, will, what a uh, bummer! My uh, yeah, um, we'll have a CP look that up at, at mrman dot com while we're talking. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think he. I'm pretty sure he kept it mystery meat. So, uh, uh, but yeah, when, but when you're playing a guy that's supposed to have an enormous cock, you can't like show it unless a you have an enormous cock or b they have some cool prosthetic. And I don't remember that. 
Um, but maybe it happened, but I don't think so. But we'll check it out at MrMan.com. But anyway, getting back to Patricia Arquette, she's she's been naked like five or six times, but really there's one movie that is your go-to movie has to be the david lynch film lost highway from 97 okay and there's a scene andrea and it happens about about an hour and a half into the movie where uh she's in front of that robert logia and um he's like a gangster and and one of and believe me with david lynch movies don't ask me what the hell happened right uh in the scene because i never understand what's going on but um she's at this gangster's place another guy's holding a gun to her head and she has to strip in front of robert loggia so um i gotta say for her 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 first real nude scene true romance was very very brief you could barely see anything but this was like her first really good um you could see things uh i know she did a movie called time out in the 80s late 80s but again dark hard to see but this was like great lighting um takes her bra off and a great topless scene plus she had um uh a really good sex scene with that balthasaur getty dude that oh, was in the movie yeah. with her remember that guy yes. yeah so lost highway is the go-to movie to see patricia arquette naked um human nature is also uh, good except she, they have like her she's all hairy like on her body and stuff it's really uh weird and then um the oh uh cp he's Telling me uh, that he just uploaded a pic oh, so you could see her boobs. I, so you could see her boobs. I'm seeing um, more than that. Oh, okay. I don't know what you're looking at, but anyway. Um, but w- one other quick <laughs> thing about Patricia Arquette. <laughs> yeah. Her sister is in the Mister Skin Hall of Fame. Roseanne Arquette, mm-hmm. who is I want to say ten or eleven years older. Yeah, she's I like think her so. older sister. Mm-hmm. And um, she's in the Mister Skin Hall of Fame. Been naked about eighteen times. But here's a little trivia: their mother, Brenda Denois is also at MrSkin.com. She did a 1964 movie called Olga's House of Shame. Interesting. So, yeah, so it's mom has showed her incredible rack. Rosanna Arquette 18 times. Patricia Arquette six times. It, that is impressive when you can get a mom and two daughters that have all, um, all been naked, and all all three were very hot. So um, Absolutely. That's gr- yeah, that's a great um, wheel of skin question uh, from... Uh, uh, CP for our uh, <laughs> our weekly wheel of skin. So Patricia Arquette, great question, and I hope uh, I answered all your skin information. Andrew, yeah, so. and then uh, CP just put up a picture of the mom, Brenda Denot, and she is oh, amazing. oh, it, it's a black and white. How big is that rack? It's huh? big, and you know what? The, the yeah. whole family has big natural boobs. The whole family has a very similar looking face too. Like they oh, really yeah, have the strong yeah. genes. Yeah, don't you, doesn't she, if you look at the mom, doesn't she look like Roseanne Arquette? Yeah, she yeah. even looks like, uh, bless her soul, uh, Alexis, you know, who was born uh, a man <laughs> yeah. and transitioned yeah. to a woman. Yes. I even see some Alexis in her. Um, wow. Wow. I'm blown oh, away. Wait a second. CP just posted a picture of Thomas Jane. I know. That's that what I was. That does look like al- a pretty that, big cock. That's what is, I was alluding is that from to. Hung? Is that from Hung? That is Hung. That's the episode, oh. Fuck Me, Mr. Drecker. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, wow well if that's his cock he's got a pretty big cock but i'm wondering if it's some cgi or I if know, it's this that or know. the other because if that was your big mystery meat package why would you not be showing it on a show called hung you know what i'm saying I agree. like it well, would be out every day because it's kind of yeah. the star of the show yeah, I agree. Because if that is his cock that we're looking at, that Limp is biscuit quite a, right quite there. A cop. I mean, but that's like it, it's like I don't even know how far it goes because it like it's cut off about six inches before before it gets cut off. You don't even see the head yet. Yeah, you know, you know as a ball and uh, shaft oh. expert, I'm okay. calling you are, bullshit. You, you are definitely the act. Oh, you don't think that's real? No, huh? because the balls are way up. They start at the top of the base. I've never seen that. In my vast okay. practical experience, <laughs> okay. I've been in a lot of I've been in a, a lot of locker rooms, but I haven't been as up close as you have. No, so I'm gonna not uh, so you put yeah. your face gonna, down there. <laughs> I'm gonna defer to you on this stuff. So I don't, yeah, happy to I, receive I the deferment as well because I would hope yeah. you don't know. Uh, but, but next liked, time you're in here, check it out and just be like, oh yeah, my nuts don't start that high. <laughs> okay, well, I, hey, listen, I'm gonna trust you on this. I I like that show hung. I also let my wife's from Detroit, so I like the fact that it was from Detroit. 
that cool. too. I, I dug the show. They had a lot of good female nudity on that show also, but I did not know that Thomas Jane showed his cock. And if that is his cock, and uh, CP's telling me at Mr. Man, we are not claiming prosthetics. So um, if that is his cock, if it uh, is, that's, bravo, that's impressive. Sir. Bravo. Yeah, bravo to him. So <laughs> anyway, I got uh, sidetracked there talking about Thomas Jane's penis. A uh, <laughs> couple other shows um, before we wrap up this week's. Um, uh, episode uh, show called Strike Back on the Sky Network. I didn't get to uh, talk to you about it. It it returned for its sixth season, sixth season last week with an all new cast, and they rebooted the storyline. It's from the Sky Network, and uh, um, it still focuses on special forces units fighting terrorist organizations. But um, like I said, it's a different cast, and this I can't even pronounce this girl's name but she's smoking hot Zo- Zofia Tarjani is that it I don't know that'd be my spelled, best guess <laughs> yeah it's spelled like Sophia with a Z in front of it but anyway um, she's smoking hot you see some man ass you see some uh, total nudes and uh, yeah strike back in the six seasons it's been on we've gotten a lot of um, content from our website but uh, just wanted to let you know the sixth season is back and uh, on Sky and we are all over that at MrSkin.com um, also wanted to talk about the Sci-Fi Network that's coming up with um, a couple really good shows uh, that are uh, cool and with some good nudity, hmm. Ghost Wars which airs on Thursday nights on Sci-Fi is um, I don't know if you know about this show but it's uh, set in a remote town in Alaska that is yeah they're like overrun by paranormal forces and the Sophia Moon is a character played by Sharon Taylor and in this episode um they had I think it was their fifth episode last week not um I can't I get confused on when it is but it was their fifth episode I don't know if a sixth one's aired yet but um their fifth episode she gets in the shower um, and we get a nice butt shot of her, and eventually that water turns to blood, which has happened uh, oh, thanks a few times. Kind of, kind thanks, of ruins, ruins my uh, buzz. But uh, um, anyway, she gets uh, very naked, and if you probably enjoy it a lot more before the water in the shower turns to blood. But um, <laughs> it's pretty cool that the Sci-Fi Network with commercials is doing a, a nice nude scene from one of the leads from Ghost Wars. And uh, there's a nice little following. I hear guys ask us about that uh, show and when the girls are going to get naked and all that. So people are watching it, but it's called Ghost Wars Thursdays on Sci-Fi. And then on Fridays, there's a show called Superstition, which mm-hmm. is a new show in their first season, third episode. And um, uh, I don't, I truly don't know much about the show, but I do know that this uh, Tajia Grant um, showed butt in a really weird uh, scene. She <laughs> she rises out of a geyser. Don't ask. And. Uh, um she's i guess she's like some sort of seductress as i look at the gif of this and she's dancing around and um what was weird about this andrea and this is we know this on bravo but she showed her butt no problem she's completely nude but if you look closely Mm -hmm. they they blurred out her nips they do that so she's totally nude but they're doing a nip blur out which is very common on the bravo network you yeah. know so yeah so the sci-fi is doing sci-fi. the same thing you know sci-fi yeah. is never one of my channels that i'm like oh let's see what's on sci-fi but you're really opening my eyes to some cool stuff i feel like maybe it's time for me to switch genres and start going to the the sci-fi side of things hey man the geeks need nudity too you know and, they need uh, it the it's, most uh, yeah now they know <laughs> they need it yeah great comment um but anyway yeah so the sci-fi network's been hot the last couple of weeks for nudity i just wanted to fill everyone in hell and, yeah um, i'm like amped on this right now yeah, it's pretty hot. So uh, anyway, we had that. And then uh, last but not least, as far as television goes, I wanted to update you on You're the Worst, which is a um, a show on uh, FX. It's in their fourth season, and it's really been a great show. Remember, we had that Amy Peets, the girl from uh, um, Caroline in the City, who showed up. Oh uh, yeah, a couple episodes ago, who was throwing up, uh, <laughs> showing full buttage, and yeah. it was awesome. Well, um, last week, um, and I, I had to bring this up. It's it's non nude, but the star of the show is uh, Aya Cash. She's one of the uh, stars of the show, and um, her and and 
Dudak are doing this lesbian scene after they, they meet for some drinks and they go back and there is some serious Andrea finger banging going on uh, with these two girls. And I got to say, I didn't think this had happened, but maybe one of the best lesbian scenes of the year is coming from an FX show, You're the Worst. It's it's really um, hot. They get really drunk. It's a little uncomfortable, but mm-hmm. um, very, very uh, hot scene with uh, Ann Dudek and Aya Cash, but serious finger banging going on between the two gals so yeah you know i think female hand jobs you know like the woman receiving are really underrated i want to make every man who's listening who's in a relationship their homework this week to manually stimulate your woman it's so hot and erotic it's so good well i said it was a little uncomfortable this anna dudek is aya cash's boyfriend's ex-wife oh well let's not do that guy (laughs) let's stick to uh who our partner is (laughs) yeah so imagine that yeah and and, yeah and the mother of their teenage daughter of their teen daughter so it's a weird scene this show is is that's why it's called you're the worst but i'm telling you i every time i look for the week of what happened on television i always am drawn to this year year yeah. the worst because i'm just fascinated by the, the shit that's going on in that show so um anyway um really hot lesbian scene with ann dudek and i cash the uh, one of the uh, stars of you're the worst um last week so uh there's that now last but not least um i did um want to share with you andrea and i would love to get your opinion on this okay so, um Last week, I saw a thing, it was, I think it was on E! Online, where um, Raquel Welch was at a an event. Now, um, first and foremost, as a guy who grew up in the 70s, uh, Raquel Welch is like... Everything. You know, she, yeah, she's like way up on my list. <laughs> I mean, um, she's the epitome of like what a gorgeous woman should be built like. Like when you think of like a real fucking hot woman, you think Raquel Welch. Like... Oh yeah, that she's no just the epitome. Well, yeah, no question. So I and she, it was always one of my when people ask me name an actress that you were bummed never did a nude scene and Raquel Welch is um, always on my <laughs> way up on my list. I yeah. always you would have thought with all those movies she did where she was in you know <sighs> bikinis and and being you know from the sexual so revolution sexy, and the body yeah. she had that she would have done like there were so many times in the seventies and. Uh, Myra Breckenridge and all these movies mm. she was in where she could have easily have done just whip um, the titty out come on yeah it just <laughs> never happened um there is one great remember we uh we talk about swingers remember Alexandra Daddario and baked in Brooklyn where um she had her back to the camera but she has such big natural boobs that they swung back and forth and you could see like boobage from behind you well, could see so much boobage from behind there so big. Welch has a has a a moment in Trouble in Paradise a made for TV movie in 1988 where that happened. That that's where I first coined swingers when I oh, saw nice. her take her top off from oh. behind. But she never did an official nude scene. Always bummed me out. And uh, anyway, so I get back to um, so E online posted some pictures. I she was at an event and she's wearing this black t- beautiful dress and she's 75 years old. Holy and just, shit. She's 75 was telling, looking like that. I was that? telling CP, I would so bang her right now. Oh, wait, I think he's telling me she's 77. What? <laughs> she's 77 years old. This makes and no sense. No, I would so bang Raquel Welch at 77. Dude, I think her, she's okay. so hot. Yeah. So, you know, you know, I've interviewed so many former playmates, older women, mm-hmm. you know, that had their heyday and, and uh, their boobs are not looking like this. I don't know how, maybe she just has massive mammary glands. Her boobs are still full. And you could tell they're real. Like you could tell those are her real boobs. They're not. But um, usually when a woman's that age, they really lose their mass. They just get really soft. And uh, these look firm. But also just her hair and her face and everything. She looks so hot. She's beautiful. She's flawless. She has the exact same caliber of beauty that she had in her youth she's just grown up now but she doesn't look old at all i'm with you bang bang right. bang all day I yes mean- i had to share this with you it um uh one of our uh the writers at our office was like check out 
Uh, check out the Raquel Welch oh, how she's I hope looking. I look like and her I was saying, when I'm for seventy five, I said that's the hottest seventy five year old I've ever seen. And that now I find out she's seventy seven. So if she she's... was forty five, I'd be like, she's so hot. Yeah, I know. Believe me. Yeah. So seventy five or uh, what is seventy? Seventy seven is the new seventy five, as far as I'm concerned. She's so, amazing. Yeah, she looks awesome. So I just wanted to wrap up this she's week with, um, to see that uh, Raquel Welch still looks amazing at seventy seven years old. But uh, anyway, Andrea. So I'm glad we got. Caught up on television because there's uh, whenever I do a show that's not television then I always worry that I'm going to have too much to talk about <laughs> in the next podcast because right. there's so much stuff but I think we're we're good and uh, we're going to a lot of obviously these three new shows that debuted uh, last night are going to be fodder for the rest of the year because I can't imagine a week I don't have good um, shameless girlfriend experience and Smilf uh, stuff to talk about. So we're going to be pretty loaded up through the end of the year. And that's fantastic. And I, you know, I hope Raquel Welch is uh, hitting more red carpet so we can just talk about her all the time too. Oh man, would I love to see her possible red carpet? Well, no, she oh, wouldn't have red carpet. Well, maybe but- she has a little bit of an auburn tint to her hair. Yeah, she has. She always had like a little. Uh, right, she had an auburn tint to her hair in the '70s in some of those great scenes. Oh, look. Uh, you see what CP he um, posted a shot of her in a, getting out of a pool oh, yes. in a bikini in the I've 70s. I've been watching Look at that, that for the last oh, five minutes. It, I mean, yeah, so this is <laughs> harking back to the days. So It's like, how yeah, is this but, even real? I mean, that, yeah, I that level of beauty, it's not even real. Yeah. Oh. I, and I don't yeah, and I don't even know too much about her personal life, so I'll have She's to private, I have to do a little research uh, when I get off the air. But anyway, um, that was a little ode to Raquel Welch. It was a great week for TV as usual. And uh, next week what'll be seventy one our seventy first episode next week. That's right. We're on seventy yeah. right now and seventy was incredible. You definitely made my week skin. Well, it's the least I could do. But again, <laughs> there's so much good stuff to talk about. And uh, coming soon, I'll have that Michelle Dockery, um, specifically what she shows uh, in Godless, but c- confirmed that there is some good nudity from her. So that's awesome. That's fantastic news. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we'll be back next week, episode 71. We'll see you guys next time. You got it. Take care. This concludes another skin titillating episode of the Mr. Skin Podcast. Subscribe to the Mr. Skin Podcast in iTunes and never miss a show. Thanks for listening.